Twitch chat Wardog message over. Welcome back, guys, to Three Kingdoms Thursday. And we are going to, first of all, a little bit of a quick update for those of you who are unaware. Uh, the day after I did last week's Tao Tao stream where we restarted uh, because people were uninterested uh, and uh, disengaged with the previous campaign, my PC died and I lost all my data. So rather than restarting Tao Tao again and essentially doing the same stream that I did last Friday, uh, I have decided that we are going to start with not Zhang Yan, despite the fact that he's in the middle of the screen. We are going to start with Jung Zhang. We're going to do a Bandit Queen roleplay. And of course, the whole game here is anybody who's really interested, followers, subs, whatever. Unfortunately, we can't rename officers in this game, but you can essentially sponsor an officer where you say, I want that one and I want to decide what their skills are. I want to try and encourage what career path they go through, whether you want them to be a general or a civil administrator or whatever and we'll try and do that i'm incredibly quiet okay not sure how the mic settings should be capturing plenty one moment guys thank you honey for letting me know thank you honey for letting me know i am indeed a little bit quiet david how you doing david welcome to the stream we're just, just sorting out these uh, mic issues here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hopefully that's better. If I'm still super quiet, let me know. But I don't want to slide the thing up too far. Because all hell will break loose and everyone will get deafened. So, we are going to be starting with Jung Zhang. Uh, we're gonna re this is going to be a new campaign. It's going to be a little bit of Chinese going on here in a second. So... The chat overlay is too low down. Alright, apologies guys. I seem to be having a million technical issues right now. The chat box is indeed in the, some weird position. Not sure why it's in that position. Let me just uh, move that around a little bit. Oh, I think I know what it was. Damn it. I can't remember when it was that I changed this thing, but I changed uh, changed it to a rectangle for some reason instead of a square, which is what it used to be. All right, chat box should now be living where it used to live in a square on the left-hand side of the screen, guys. Apologies for that, and I'm apparently still a little bit quiet. I don't really know what to do about that because I've bumped the microphone up stupidly far and I don't want to bump it up any further uh, just make sure it's using the right one Maybe the game volume is too high. That is possible. Microphone is definitely better. Okay. Well, we'll get there in the end. Um, game volume is a little bit higher than I usually have it. Ugh. One of these days I'm going to set up settings just for each individual game so I don't have to keep pissing about with them. But that should be fine, guys. If there's any more problems, do let me know. Don't feel mean, hun. I, I'm glad somebody, uh, game catcher needs adjusting to fit to screen. So it does. Well spotted, David. What the feck is going on? Right, here you go. Wee! China, all over the place. 
Uh, that's the weirdest thing ever. Like, the physical box on OBS is, um, like, just going past the left-hand side of Kong Chen's portrait. And underneath, like, the very hard on Jung Jong. But the picture is uh, in the right place. I don't know what the hell that's about. But there we go. Text cuts off on the right hand side. <laughs> you definitely, yeah, I should just make you watch the, watch the stream on a Jacob's Cracker. That looks fine to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, you know what? Fuck it. That's enough technical difficulties. I do appreciate all of you guys that have pointed stuff out to me, but I'm just going to crack on and uh, I'll fix whatever else is still broken in, in a future stream. I do have a top of tea, so apologies if there's some breaks for drinking. Right, Jung Jang, the bandit queen, the one who wants to burn down China. Apparently very hard starting situation. We did experience that with our own previous Jung Jang campaign where we spent 10 years wandering around in the mountains like a bunch of idiots. She's a champion, so she's good at kicking people's ass, as in other officers. She gets less mustering turns for her forces and she gets 50% tribute in diplomacy. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Faction resources in for me. Basically does a load of stuff. It's basically she's scary. She's aggressive expansion. We do get some cool axe bandit units. And uh, Lu Jung, of course, the sister to Jung Jiang. Both of them sort of mythical legendary figures rather than strictly historical. Uh, and Kong Chen, who is uh, a bloke. So there we go. Dynasties and nobility mean nothing to Jung Jiang. She prefers to seize glory in her own way. As the Han burns, she sees at last the crumbling of an institution she deeply despises. And what have they ever known of hunger? What fear have they ever felt for corrupt and avaricious officials? Jung Jiang has never known the ease of a noble upbringing, nor the expectation of civilized society. Instead, she is resolved to earn fame and prestige for herself through merciless fury and unrelenting strength. Excellent. Let's get into this, guys. Chao So, yes, bitch is angry. Um, I'm going to talk over her talking here because it's the same intro as always. If you don't know the intro, China, government, shit, people, starving, rebellion, rebellion, then beaten. But then because of the beating and all the private armies that were raised to beat it, suddenly everybody went, hmm, government unstable, me have army, all kill, become emperor. That's like Chinese history of the Three Kingdoms period in the smallest possible nutshell. Fucking love pinyin names. I mean, it is typical Total War intro for sure, but... Unlike most other Total War games where they kind of like, you know, they, they kind of overstate it. In, in this period, it generally just was like there was a moment where everybody went, Huh, I could take over. Right, we will listen to them, but subtitles in the top right. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, hopefully you will. That might be off the screen, actually. Don't 
，此人定是人人得而诛之。若与诸侯共诛此贼，则非我所为，不若坐山而观虎斗。各郡黄金风起，欲意报还大仇，打破枷锁。又被正所谓旧土已绝，大厦将倾，百姓揭竿而起。诸侯毫无还手之力。Yeah, don't draw the veil. 就在此时，如今天下疲敝，狼心狗行之徒各怀鬼胎。若欲寻得金玉功名，何不进取烽烟中寻？正将待往，风云变幻之际，务必把握时机，攫取功名。All righty. Stop running off to the side. We are going to read these events and stuff, guys, just for a bit of flavor and uh, get everybody hopefully into it. So our first mission is establish your power. Jung Jung, the land is being consumed by chaos, but it is in chaos that you thrive. None in this world have accepted you and none have welcomed you. So you must make your own world, one where you rule. Alliances may be of temporary use, yet there are very few warlords that you should trust. Any who oppose you in your quest for your glory should be destroyed. All will bow to the Bandit Queen. The Bandit Queen revels in destruction and war. Change is in the air. The smell of a rotting dynasty pervades the land. Imperial forces are ripe for defeat. Strike out and crush them. The Han is dying. And you must hasten their end. And that is a mission to defeat Shun Yu, who is this guy in front of us. We start off with an iron sickle, discourses of the states, defender's leather, and a jade sculptor. I'm not going to dish any of that out right now because it is we are role playing this, so it will be dished as rewards. I like to not read the subtitles and instead stare at the screen like I have no idea what you're saying. But I want to fight now. Indeed. Um, yes, hopefully it reflects on the stream. Uh, I have a better graphics card and I am finally have a PC that could do HDMI. I'm not going to fight this fight purely because it's a strategist and two archer units. So they won't put up any kind of resistance whatsoever. So we're just going to auto resolve this first one. There's an 85% chance we'll capture Shun Yu. We might have done it actually because he's not dead. Did we capture Shun Yu? If we did, I'm recruiting him. Come on. We did! Hey! Shun Yu, he's 27 years old. He's distinguished, brilliant, and dutiful. We are going to employ him. Shun Yu, of course, was a very um, famous Han. Um, civil sort of well civil officer civil advisor uh ended up uh working for yuan shao and cao cao we're going to take replenishment and that's that mission done that boosts us some uh, morale and military supplies glorious victory victory the survivors of this battle will run back to their simpering masters, and through feared whispers they shall all know my name before the end. Bonus XP for Jung Jung, and the next mission. She's probably going to pop up a lot, guys. Um, it's because of the advisor settings I've got on, because uh, the game's really uh, newly installed. Jung Jung begins her conquest. You have as much claim to lead as any of these spineless nobles my lady and now is the time to prove it by capturing this nearby region you can demonstrate both your martial prowess and your administrative potential boosh right let's have a quick look through who we've got we have of course got jung jang who is 18 years old at the game start this is basically as young as she can be without being unplayable she's clever she's greedy and she's determined Unfortunately, I'm not going to let you guys sponsor the faction leader themselves. But over the rest of these guys, pay attention to their stats, because if you do want them, you can have them. So we have 24-year-old Sentinel Kong Tien, who is a lookout. 
uh, or has a lookout's background. He is incompetent, deceitful, and intimidating. It's not particularly impressive. We have 30-year-old Yin Li, who is a saboteur that is vengeful, feared, and artful. We have 27-year-old Chu Gong, who is relentless, clumsy, and honorable. Relentless is uh, kind of like... Well, I mean, you know what the words mean. Some of them are a little bit like less clear what the trait actually is. But yeah, relentless, he will go after his goals, he's honorable, and he's clumsy as well, which is an interesting bunch of traits. Lu Jung, who is Jung Jung's sister, of course. A um, little bit of background on the two of them. There is a very brief mention of somebody called Jung Jung or Lu Jung or something like that in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It is a bandit, and I do believe in history... It's possible she was female. I think from the way they translated it, it's not clear whether it's a male or a female. Um, and it's also not clear whether it's one person or two. So when CA decided to include Jung Jung, they decided to also split her into the two potential people, which is Jung Jung and Lu Jung. So they are quote-unquote sisters, but they're not technically blood relations, because otherwise she'd be called Jung Lu, because Chinese surnames are the first one so she's 25 she's competitive she's committed like an arrow this one is ever moving towards one goal sweeping up many others in their wake and she's resourceful and then of course we've just recruited 27 year old Shun Yu dutiful brilliant distinguished and with a fondness towards our faction because he was a captive and we uh, freed him or hired him rather Sarah would like to sponsor Lu Jung. Try and tell me that Chu Gong's traits aren't pecker in a nutshell. Let me have a, another look at them. Relentless, clumsy, and honourable. You know what, Ryan? You may well be right. That is pretty much your wow character. So Sarah is going to be sponsoring Lu Jung. So Sarah will be making the skill decisions if she's around. If I can, I'll delay making skill decisions until the sponsor's around. But if you sponsor somebody and then you never come back to the stream, eventually I will just start making decisions for that character because I'm not just going to freeze them out. That goes for everybody. I'm not saying that to anyone in particular. We're going to attack Tai Yuan. And as much as it's medium casualties, we are going to delegate this battle, get it over with. It's not worth attacking towns early on before you've got fire arrows and stuff because you just lose a crap ton of men. Ryan's going to sponsor Chu Gong. Excellent. So now we've got two sponsors, Lu Jung and Chu Gong. Uh, we will occupy this town. That gets us some public order and some faction support. Establishing order. This city is just the beginning of my fury. I will become the name that the decadent Han fear to speak, lest they invoke my rage. Another issue, another issue, another mission. To be a queen, Jung Zhang must act like a queen. A good leader provides for their people, yes? Then you have an obligation to do the same. If the people love you, they will produce more for you, and your standing will rise. Have construction started in your settlements and watch your power grow. So basically you just have to build a building. Right. Just rotate the camera back the right way. That's our capital. So, tie you in. We've got a town. We can have one assignment. I'm going to try not to make the mistake that I did in the previous Jung Jiang campaign, which was uh, essentially not expanding the army fast enough. Um, we can't recruit a s anybody on the first turn, so that's fine. Tie you in. Makes its money solely from industry with a minus 50%. Why is that? Where does that come from? Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, let's upgrade the state workshops to communal workshops, which will cost us most of our money. But that's fine. It should increase our income. And we shall end the turn. 
David's going to wait slightly longer. No problem, David. I think what I'm going to say for the time being is people are only allowed to sponsor one character at a time, but you can switch the character if, say, you sponsor somebody and then you see we recruit another one or a son comes of age or a daughter comes of age and you think, I really want that one, you can switch them over, but I'm going to basically say it's one character each so that people can't get uh, disengaged because they've sponsored too many characters, basically. Right. We are going to do, 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 do. Who's the oldest? Yin Li is actually the oldest person in the faction. The oldest officer in the faction is 30. This is a young person's movement. Um, trying to think of who I would like to recruit here. And I think it kind of has to be Lu Jung, Sura. Sura? <laughs> Sura! It has to be Lu Jung. It's got to be Jung Jung's sister. So we're going to recruit Lu Jung. And... We're going to shuffle things around here so that... I always... D to me, these positions are ranks. So you've got your general, you've got your captain, and the third one is the lieutenant. Um, so sometimes, just for the sake of who's actually the second in command I will swap them around so I think Lu Jung's easily the second in command over Kong Chen nobody actually likes Kong Chen look he does not harmonize with either of the sisters right we don't have a lot of money we have got quite a few archers so what we're gonna do here is can I have Kong Chen recruit mm, some Sabre Militia and that's probably it for this turn so we'll just move on In the Tao Tao stream, I spent several streams like, is my boy old enough to maim someone yet? You did, Ryan. Um, and I think if, in hindsight, like in that situation, again, what we would do is you just sponsor somebody else until he comes of age. And then when he comes of age, you can switch back so that you don't have like several streams where you're like, oh, my sponsored person's underage. Remind you on the different classes? No problem at all, mate. So, the green are the champions. They champions... Shut up. I don't need your help. The green champions are the ones who... Essentially, they are officer fighting officers. So, they're the duelists. Uh, the blue are the strategists. Uh, their role is really more of a battlefield support role. They do a lot of, like, ability cooldown timers or making the enemies cooldown, t cooldown timers last longer. Um... Each one is tied to one of these five traits. So purple is the sentinels, uh, whose main trait is expertise. The sentinels job is essentially a tank. Uh, they're meant to get stuck into enemy units and they have higher defense. So basically it takes the enemy units long, it, longer to kill sentinels. They're also fairly decent if you throw them into a duel, if you want to tie up the person that you're dueling with. They're pretty good at standing their ground, but they will probably lose the duel in the end. Uh, levels and stuff, depending. Uh, resolve is the champion's one. Uh, cunning is the strategist one. And then the two that we don't have any characters for yet. Instinct uh, is the one that provides vanguards, which are red. Vanguards are the characters that are meant to kill enemy units. So not generals, but they're really good at like smashing apart um, the enemy units. An authority is for the commanders who are yellow and um, the commanders are they're kind of on the battlefield they feel kind of like a jack of all trades master of note role um, they they can handle themselves in duels under the right circumstances but against a champion of equal level and such they'll probably lose in a fight with a vanguard that's not a duel, they'll probably lose. 
against a Sentinel of the same level, they'll probably lose. And obviously they will beat a Strategist because Strategists aren't built for that. But also, each one, each grouping, if I go back to recruitment, um, like essentially the units are built uh, divided into classes too so blue is missile units green is spear units purple is like frontline infantry with axes and swords red is shock cavalry so they're better at the charge but if you leave them stuck in the fight they'll probably start to lose and then yellow is melee cav which is the other way around their charge isn't as powerful as shock cav but if you leave them stuck in a fight they'll do all right for themselves and it's basically tied to the class so um, everybody can recruit one base unit from each category so we're looking at a strategist right now she can recruit saber militia she can recruit g militia and she can recruit mounted lancer militia and mounted saber militia which is the base level from the other four categories but she can't recruit anything else outside of her category unless it's a special faction unit um, so she can only recruit the better archers um, Archer Militia is the basic one. So essentially, if you want to command, like, Shock Cav, you should be picking a Vanguard. If you want to command Spearmen, you really want to be picking a Champion. If you want the Frontline, you want a Sentinel. If you want Melee Cav, you want a Commander. And if you want Missile Units, you, you want a Strategist. So, yeah, that's what they all do. Uh, Chu Gong is not looking particularly happy right now. Um... I am actually going to send Yin Li on an assignment to supervise construction in Tai Yuan, which will make it cheaper and faster. And then I think that's going to be the end of that turn. Strategists also cannot duel at all. Yes, Sarah's right. All four of the other classes can duel if they want. Uh, regardless, uh, it's just champions are predisposed to it. Jesus wept. Sun Jian is dead in spring of 191. I think that's the fastest I've ever seen him die. He's died before Dong Zhuo, for God's sake. So Sun Jian killed by Huang Zhu at the Battle of Xiangyang. Uh, that red mark means it was it is a historical event, but it doesn't always occur at the historical time. So Sun Jian, the leader of Wu, has died. We've got a bunch of people in the recruitment pool, but I don't think I want any of them. Mao Jia and Yu Jin are two of Cao Cao's historical officers, but I'm not going to be trying to hoard officers. Um, I'm going to move out. We're going to move down to the border so we get an extra turn of replenishment, but then we're going to aim for the toolmaker next turn. And Zhong Zhang has leveled up. So she's clever, greedy, and determined, and her options here are Guile, Intuition, and Trust. Hmm. I feel like it's either going to be Guile or Intuition. Uh, based on her traits. I'm going to go with Guile for the time being. No, I'm not. I'm going to go for Intuition. Just because it doesn't unlock an additional one based on the lines. And if I get Guile, I might move on and not get Intuition at all. So we'll get that one first. Reforms! Yeah, you've got to pick a good mix. You can have an army with like three of the same officers, but it's almost certainly not going to be as strong as an army with a mix. But five classes and only three officer slots in an army, you can't have one of every officer in an army. You've got to pick and choose. Um, we're going to get military markets for the supplies because in the early game supplies are crucial. You will run out really easily. So the battlefield is a land of plenty for those seeking a sword, a helmet and even coin. Basically military markets are places where people sell loot. And because it's spring we'll do the first campaign save. Chung Jong. Twitch. One. I'm probably I'm gonna try and remember to click the save to cloud button, but you have to click it every time, which is really frustrating. And I forget really easily. Um we are making minus money, so we definitely need to take Tai Yuan Toolmaker next turn. Uh 
Uh, is my cursor not lining up? It should do. We've gained a stone statue of Confucius. And we are now not looking great. So we're definitely going to attack the Toolmaker. Good low casualties, so... I'm going to switch it to a night battle. We're not going to fight it again because the towers will rip us to shreds. It's not worth doing. Um, I almost clicked start battle then anyway. The cursor's off to the left. That's really weird. I'm not sure why that is. Um, we are just going to occupy this, I think. Let me just have a quick glance at the game cap. Hmm. Excuse just one second, guys. I am putting different overlays on here. Okay. Not really sure why that's happening. Very odd. It might be something to do with Streamlabs and the fact that we moved things around so much. Could be just the fact that things aren't lining up. Um... Are we still in... We are indeed still in window of mode. Let's see if turning that off helps. If it doesn't help, I'm just going to turn it back on. And... Uh, so, right now, I'm putting my cursor over the U in Tai Yuen Toolmaker. Like on the un on the bottom side of the curve, it's in the mountain. Wow, that's way off. Okay, uh, I apologise for that, guys, but I'm not gonna get too wound up about it right now because I don't know what to do about it. If anybody has experienced this problem before, especially if you're a streamer and you do know how to fix it, please do let me know because if I know how to fix it, I will. But I'm not gonna sit and figure it out. Chu Gong has a warning marker, Ryan, because he's getting a little bit more upset with the faction, but he's fine for now. David might know a possible solution. Excellent. Uh, Zhang Yan, the other bandit leader, wants to pay us 162 copper and trade it for the stone statue of Confucius and a non-aggression pact. Yeah, we'll do that. Game capture properties fit to screen. What, on Streamlabs? Okay, let me have a look at that. Game capture properties. Where is fit to screen? I don't see that. Game capture properties fit to screen. Yeah, if we, if we could get together later, David, and, and try and find out a fix for that, that'd be great. But I can't see that option. So, new mission. The Bandit Queen draws more warriors to her cause. 
You are well versed in war, my lady, and China is on the brink of total chaos. Only strength on the battlefield will decide a victor, and it must be you. Increase recruitment to your armies, then ride into battle and destroy all opposition. So, um, we're going to head towards Shihe fishing port. It's currently harvest season. We're going to stay on our side of the border again, just for an extra turn of replenishment. Chugong is going to get worse. Um... But I don't think there's too much we can do about it right now. <laughs> Let me slay the enemy. Seize the future. A scholar joins your faction. He hasn't really. It's not an officer. And asks for an audience with you. Begging no disrespect, he tactfully explains that though his previous lord was lacking in leadership qualities, he was in possession of advancements that have thus far evaded your faction. He suggests that there are many useful reforms available to those brave enough to embrace them, and states that he recognises this courage in you. You thank him for his counsel and now consider which ideas to take forward as your own. So we gained a scholar ancillary, not like an officer. And that's like so prevalent with the way that Romance of the Three Kingdoms works, like the novel. It's constantly, it's filled with people that like turn up out of the woodwork almost literally sometimes and offer advice. And essentially w how competent the Lord is determines their response. So if they're an incompetent Lord, they dismiss the advice, which always turns out to have been the right advice because they're an incompetent Lord. And if they're a competent lord, they listen to the advice, which also turns out to be right. Unless it's trying to show you that the person giving the advice is a bad advisor. But typically it isn't done that way. The way it works is it's always on the lord. The advisor is almost always right. It's just whether they get listened to. Friends stick together. In the fading light of day, you and a friend gather for a drink. It is an almost ritualistic time for you both, a time to sit, reflect, and enjoy one another's company. There is seldom time these days, not like there used to be, so you both savour the moment, and each other's company, and fine, fine wine. Jung Jiang and Lu Jung have become friends, the two sisters. Chen Gong is a, another famous advisor from the novel, and Xia Yuan, obviously one of Cao Cao's strongest generals in the early stage, uh, who always seems to end up in the recruitment pool, and I'm always very suspicious that he might be a spy, because <laughs> I don't know why else he'd be there. Even though it's winter, we are going to advance. Ooh. Zhao Wun is uh, on the other side of the river. And I do apologize as well if there's anybody who speaks good pinyin, uh, who knows how to read these names. I try very hard to do it right, but I don't always get it right. Zhang Yang wants a clay warrior for a non-aggression pact. Hell to the no, that sounds a lot like I'm giving you tribute. Zhang Yan declared war on the Yellow Turbans. Cool. We've gained a stone archer. And we're about to gain a fishing port. So again, we're going to delegate. Um, we don't really need to change it to a night battle, but we will. We will start fighting some of these battles, guys. It's just the early settlement battles really cost you more men than they're worth fighting. So it's not worth doing. It's, it's better to... Uh, it's better to delegate them. Cool, that's that done. Um, it's reform time again. I don't believe any of these are military supplies now. They are not. Um, but if we get resettlement initiatives, we can get permission to forage next time, next year. So we're going to get resettlement initiatives. From the agriculture tree, which gives us pop growth. 
The wise leader can make very reasonable offers to those who decide to stay, toil, and never leave. Sounds a lot like being a prisoner. How is Chugong doing? He's getting pretty unhappy. But unfortunately, he's not a, a whole lot. Oh no, we do have... No, next turn we'll have an assignment which we could give him. Which will give him some purpose, but... Oh, shiz. Le Bu is in Anding with a huge army. That's not good at all. Oh dear. Right, I'm going to end the turn. I should have saved it there, but... Yes, sister, they should be the ones paying tribute to you. Fairly close to how you would say it and you speak Chinese, David. Oh, excellent. I do try. I have tried very hard to learn Pinyin. Um, sometimes it's like some of the names are just like, Jesus, what the feck does that say? Like there's so many syllables. Two bandits fight in the mountain's shadow. High in the mountains, the Heishan bandits claim to be rebels, but their allegiance to the Han is well known. Their claim to banditry is an insult, so they must face the blade for their insolence. So I have a mission to destroy Zhang Yan, and it's apparently also a dilemma. The Black Mountain bandits, led by the powerful Zhang Yan, could be potent allies in your endeavours, and many of your subordinates agree. They suggest improving relations with him and forming a bandit alliance against your foes. However, that would involve sharing power, which is undesirable. Perhaps instead, he should be removed entirely. And you know what? I'm going to let you guys weigh in on this. It does say that most of my advisors support it. Uh, I think right now keeping him friendly is probably a good thing, because I know in the previous Let's Play the fact that he was on our northern flank and I think we were even in she, her, um, he decided to attack me and essentially put us to rout for 10 years. It took 10 years before we managed to get back. But we'll see what you guys want. <laughs> Sarah's saying, avoid by the love of God, avoid. Only w One only attempts to facilitate good relations when they fear you. It's a good argument, Ryan. Although I think we're the ones facilitating, which maybe says we're scared of Zhang Yan. Actually, that would be Zhang Yen, I think, closer to. That's, uh, Yan is a, uh, it's not actually pronounced the way that it looks like it would be. It's like it's got its own rule, I think. Befriend the bandits for now from David. Ignore entirely. Is there any real reason to befriend him? You've got better things to do with your time. You can prepare for war on your own terms. It's a good argument, Ryan, but I think the general consensus is to befriend him, so we're going to do that. You sent gifts of gold and food to Zhang Yan to curry his favour. Right. Um, I really am not in a position to be fighting Le Bu. So, we're going to head up towards the deserted town of Shi He. Although I don't know why I just did that, because we need 8,000 to colonise it, which we don't have. So that was a bad move. Uh, but we do have that assignment now. Um, you know what, we're going to send Chu Gong, Ryan, out to do some agricultural exploitation to try and get us a bit more food to stockpile. I think that, I don't know what our stockpile's like, it's 15 out of 25, so he should help to get that pushed the right direction. Oh god, Lubu. Our Lubu is coming towards us. That's not good at all. We're in no position to beat him. So we'll force march through the mountain pass. Uh, he's obviously going to take she her fishing port. Dong Do you want me to be a vassal? No. 
Interestingly enough, Dong Zhuo's request for peace is that we give him the territory Le Bu's about to take, plus our scholar and defender's leather. Uh, but making peace with Dong Zhuo would make peace with the Han, which is going to be our principal source of territory. So again, I'm going to pass it off to you guys. Some of you may not quite understand the way the situation works, um, so I'll do a little bit of explaining. The Han Empire is essentially free real estate. You have to do a little bit of a fight, but really they don't resist very much. And they're not aggressive, they don't attack. But they are Dong Zhuo's vassal. Dong Zhuo has Le Bu with a huge army. Le Bu is also level 7, he's the highest level at the start of the game. Jung Zhang is level 3, she's our highest. Uh, and they've got a full army and we've got a two-thirds of one. Normally, Dong Zhuo would ask for peace under terms of us becoming his vassal, which he's not doing here. If we do make peace with him, we won't be able to pick on the Han, and we'll have to start picking on other minor warlords to try and take their territory instead. But we also have the risk, if Le Bu decides not to stop at Shi He, he could just keep coming east, and then we've got a big problem. We'll make no deals with the Han's puppet master. Reject. Better to fight and die well than make deals with hands and their friends. <laughs> okay, obviously we're not uh, being your friend, Dong Zhuo. Oh, Le Bu actually went south. Zhong Yang, not the bandit, has declared war on us. Zhong Yan is to the south. Zhong Yan, or Zhong Yen, is to the north. A friendship forming. When battle is done, it is heartening to know that there are friends awaiting us, to laugh and tease and make the battle a distant memory. Such a bond is formed between two of your soldiers, and it is heartening to see the companionship enduring and growing over time. Kong Chen and Lu Jung, Sarah, have apparently deepened their relationship. Right, this is Zhang Yang that's just declared war on us, which is good because he's prime territory right now for us to uh, grab. So we're going to beeline to the toolmaker. Uh, Chu Gong, I think, is getting happier. Zhong, ya, uh, Zhong Yen sorry, uh, wants to give us 273 copper for a stone archer. I'm happy to sell him an ornament for a stupid amount of money. Okay, we will stay in the uh, the settlement over winter because we're already here anyway, and winter's quite brutal on supplies. Shush. Uh. I'm going to expand the army, even though in terms of upkeep we can't really afford it. I'm going to get some... No, I'm not going to get trebuchets because they're really expensive. Typically, if I have a strategist in an army, I will make the strategist's six-unit six retinue all missile troops and everybody else won't have any. If I don't have a strategist, two units in each retinue will form the missile group because I like six units. Six missile units works pretty well. Uh, that'll do. We're pushing sort of money to the extremes here. We might have to disband a few units after we take Shangdang. Zhang Yin has declared war on Zhang Yang. And we have completed a mission. China lies vulnerable. Zhang Yang will exploit this. As the Han crumbles, more and more of their territory lies vulnerable. And you must not let the opportunity for power slip through your fingers, Zhang Yang. The entire commandery is within your grasp. Simply reach out and take it. Uh, we've gained a builder ancillary, which is real nice. And I actually think, from a roleplay perspective, we're going to give that builder to Yin Li. 
because he is the one who oversaw construction previously so we'll say it's like the foreman of when he was doing that has uh, decided to follow him there's a lot of cult of personality in uh, in romance of the three kingdoms there's a lot of people that are deciding to follow other people because those people are great essentially and how do they know this because they have the benefit of story sight hello jung yang Right, it is sprint. Uh, let's do the reform first. Oh, we need outposts before I can get that. Okay. Uh, fifteen percent income from peasantry probably wouldn't hurt. Register of land and population. A leader who does not know their people is no leader at all. And then we will save because it is spring. Which two once we've got three up and running which is what I like to rotate three saves um, we might leave a couple of years between saves so we're not doing it every spring Jesus, be quiet uh, cool from each according to their ability. My lady, the generals under your command are talented individuals, each with an array of skills that they can put to use in improving your realm. In each commandery they can be sent on assignments to oversee and improve the infrastructure, both military and civic, of your lands. Each character has different qualities to bring to these endeavours, so inspect your options carefully. I'm pretty sure that Chugong's already on one, so that might get done next turn. In the meantime, wait a minute. Lu Jong, uh, Lu Jung does actually have fire arrows. Interesting. So they've got two cav, two spears. They've got Sui Gu and Zhong Yang, and then the settlement garrison. Ooh, is quite sizable. That's one and a half retinues. So essentially two retinues and some change which is the same as us okay well we're still attacking them Shush. wow really predict a valiant defeat It'd be an open field battle. Okay. Ryan's saying starve them. Lu Jung, are you still there? Because you're the only person who's actually in the army with us that's got a sponsored character at least. The manpower is almost equal to confronting them openly and risky. Starve them into submission. That's, I think that's the most poignant uh, plan, Ryan. But they may just attack us straight away on their turn. Uh, it's it's a siege, Sarah, and we're looking like it's a valiant defeat because they have 400 more troops than us. Uh, we're looking at do we starve them out? Do we fight the battle? It's not a settlement, it will be a field battle because of it's a farmland. They've got quite a force. Not very many shields, in fact only two units with shields, but we don't have that many archers. What do we reckon? Oh, Ryan, quite the tactician. Thinking like a true, true advisor of the Three Kingdoms period. I'm liking it. We've got seven melee infantry. They've got... 
seven spearmen and two melee infantry. Four archers, two shot cav. Yeah, I think the uh, consensus is starve out. That's probably what I would have picked, but that's the point of the Three Kingdom streams, guys, is you get to sponsor characters and have a say, so, you know, especially if your character ends up a general, I'll just leave the decision to you. If you want to be reckless about it, even if it makes the save harder, that's what we'll do. We're about to have problems with money. Yeah, they are attempting to come out. Okay, in terms of... Oh, we don't know enough about Zhang Yang to know how strong he is. Oh, yeah we do, just didn't want to show me. He doesn't do a lot of damage, he's got 43,000 health. Zhang Yang should own him and be able to own Sui Gu as well. I think the main issue is going to be their actual troops. Okay, the Axe Band are better as assaulting units than the others. And the Hidden Axes, of course, are pretty badass. This game is a lot of fun, David. Especially if you are interested in the period or just Chinese history in, in general. It's it's a lot of cult of personality, this game. I think a lot of people have been put off because you can't rename the generals. And you can't make it about you. But, like, the generals all have personality traits. They all have, like, character. And they are all individual. They have their own name. So... It's not just rando generated like the same people over and over again. I'm uh, I'm back and forth here. Their cavalry is dangerous, Ryan, but we've only got one unit of spears, uh, G militia, which is pretty weak. Their archer con on contingent is more or less equal to ours. And they have an absolute ton of spearmen. Although arguably, none of their spearmen have got shields. These two units do. But the majority of our forces, six of our infantry units, have shields. Which means they're pretty... Ah, oh, hera, Cal. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, what do we think, guys? I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a knife edge with this. I do think it's winnable, but it will be a tough fight. If I didn't think it was winnable, I would say we're probably better off retreating. Fighting it is a risk. Retreating is a safe option because all of these troops are bound to the settlement. They can't pursue us. It's only these units that could. Not that I think that they will, but basically that means if we withdraw, if we retreat, we're safe. Because they will not chase us. Whereas if we fight, there's a chance we win, but there's also a chance we won't. No worries, Cal. Ryan, that is a perfectly valid question, and it's the kind of thinking that I would normally process through. Um, I don't think we do gain an advantage in the long term by withdrawing, because they will just recruit more men and we're in financial difficulty. So it might be a case of rolling the dice and just trying to win the battle. That's what I mean. If it was clearly the better decision to retreat, I'd say do that. Jung Jang is clever, greedy, and determined. So I'd argue that she could either she could go either way on this. Like, she's clever and she uh, like she's clever, so she's not an idiot, but she is greedy and determined. So that could go the other direction. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Ryan, lost troops don't need to be paid. <laughs> uh, we did not get where we are without taking risks. We need to make a move, Lu Jung. Well, if my sister says so, and it seems like some of the uh, consensus amongst the minor officers in the army is to fight, let's fight. David, you may well be proved right. But uh, that's not what the consensus was. In 3K, it can happen as well, Cal. I've actually had quite a few battles where the game was like, you are going to get stuffed. And I was like, okay, sure. But I find it more fun when it's the predictions more of a rough estimate. It doesn't necessarily take into account how you would fight the battle if you manually fought it. It's more about just in general strength terms, they should kick your ass. Well, yes, but in general strength terms, I'm not using my brain. So, yeah, I've had quite a few battles where the game most certainly thought, thought that I was going to lose. I've had one, I think, where it it predicted a, uh, a valiant defeat, and I ended up with a decisive victory. That's rare, but it is possible. Right. No, I did not want to zoom out that far. Now I'm looking the wrong way. Okay. We're going to have uh, the center of our front line. It's going to be formed by the Sabre Militia. I'm going to put the axe bands on the flank and slightly further back just so that they don't necessarily take arrow fire or anything like I'm gonna let these guys soak that up the archers will form the second line uh, the G militia will have hang at the back so that once we know which side their cavalry is going to they can hopefully rush there and we will keep the hidden axes with them just so that they can also push either flank Chung Jong is going to be out front for the time being her sister is going to be on her right flank Sarah that's you and Kung Chen is going to be to her left as expected the enemy is waiting for their reinforcements In fact, they're running towards their reinforcements. I don't particularly like using officers as arrow sponges. It is a valid tactic, but it's not a very roleplay tactic. Um, if the officer feels like they would do that, then I'll do it. But I don't tend to like doing it just in general because it doesn't feel right. So we'll get a few cinematic shots while the army's on the move because speeding this game up really doesn't seem to speed things up. That is absolutely stunning. So Lu Jung there. Let me just... Nice. Get a couple of screenshots. Kong Chen. A lot of people have criticised the amount of banners in uh, Three Kingdoms. They're like, oh, so many banners, take them away. That's what it looked like. Chinese armies in this period, at least as far as we're aware, had a lot of banners. And certainly in media, if you watch anything like the, uh, the Red Cliffs movies or... Anything like that, that's certainly how they portray them. Is she going to war with a <laughs> with a feather to waft the enemy? She's a strategist. Strategists in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, or again, at least in media portrayals in things like Dynasty Warriors uh, and um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms games uh, like 
they frequently have fans because their job is not to be they're not warriors their job is not to fight it's to advise so they just have fans to keep them cool and look serene because looking serene is the important thing when you're a strategist it's nothing to do with the strategies it's just about looking serene The quill is just as mighty as the sword if you jam it into the enemy's eye, I suppose. I mean, yeah, I guess. It's a beautiful formation Jong Yang's got going on. Actually, it might be worth checking this immediately. Neither of them want to duel Jung Jung, which is sucks. Sway Gu would duel Kong Chen, but I don't know if Kong Chen would win. It's highly unlikely because they're very evenly matched. And the enemy would be better at using their abilities than me because it's a machine. You know what? Run that last bit. Where's their cav? It's on the left flank. Uh, make a decision. That'll do for now. Uh, please tell me you're running. You need to be. And you know what? Hidden Axe's right flank. Okay. I'm going to dismantle the locked formation. And pull Lu Jung back. Do they still not want to duel? No. Okay then. Enemy have got a lot of spearmen coming in. So we're going to have Kong Chen dismount. <laughs> Zhong Zhang is going to move back a little bit. Uh, cover that direction. Lu Jung can debuff the enemy's melee evasion and their armor. So we'll have her do that. Jung Jung is going to go straight for Jong Yan. Or Jong Yang, rather. Sorry. Getting them mixed up. G Militia not doing great, there. Oh, this is rough. This is rough. This is really, really rough. Well, the enemy archers have been driven off by our archers by the looks of things. But that's about the only positive. What are you doing? I told you to attack. Oh, that flipping morale debuff that Zhang Yang's got on the go. That is ouchie. Uh, Lu Zhong definitely does not want to be in there. Oh, 
将一败涂地，并被彻底遗忘。你言辞粗鄙，我当原样奉还。Excellent. Driven off that unit of cav. Oh, nice. That's affected a lot of them. Once the archers have expended their ammo, they just become light infantry. They did refuse to duel, sir. Yeah. Right. There's infantry stuck into them, so you withdraw. You rotate. Oh, this is nasty. This is such a rough fight. Wow, this is costly. Some of their officers are not even remotely damaged either. Don't let them shoot at you. That'll hurt. Good, you've made them retreat. Get them. Oh no, Lu Jung's running away. Okay, she's rallied. Just get them, please. Oh my god. Well, they're not going to stand for very long. Uh, run away. <laughs> what are you doing, apart from nothing? God, they're all trying to like jump on Lu Jung, and even Jung Jang's not doing very well. In fact, all of our men have run away. It's now just the officers. This has not gone well at all. Wow. Okay. Well. Yep. There we go, that's a loss. Ouch! Ouch, ouch, ouch. 
I think it was worth the risk, but uh, ultimately it was just not doable. But again, they can't pursue us because their uh, main force is too small. Shameful defeat. Defeat? Bah! Nothing more than a setback. Every last one responsible for humiliating me will be paid back a hundred times over. I swear. And we're bankrupt. Jung Zhang seeks to demonstrate her power. By climbing the ladder of the nobility in your own way, you will prove to the decadent snobs of the Han nobility that you are every inch their equal and more. Start with the buffoon tyrant Dong Zhuo, and show them all that as your power grows, they must fall in line or fall. Ooh, and we've got a debate going on. Exactly, Cal. Artful versus honourable. Your peaceful meditation is disturbed by an angry discussion between two of your retainers happening nearby. You listen to the argument. As a bastion of honour, I cannot allow this to stand. You have taken countless bribes for army rations, says the first. If you want, I can involve you, argues the second. How does half sound? They are unaware that you are listening. So I think Artful here, Yin Li is the one who's taken bribes, and Chu Gong is the one that has a problem with it. I think Artful is uh, because Chu Gong's honourable, so he must be the one that's not happy. Um, hmm. I think given that Jung Jang has the greedy trait, she's probably going to side with Yin Li. This man is industrious, if not insalubrious. You commended him for his effort, but with a stern warning. Tsai Yong and Ju Jun are available to be recruited. Lu Jung has actually leveled up, Sarah, if you're around. Wow, we are battered. What's their garrison look like? Yeah, they came off better than we did, that's for sure. We can't move the tax level. Damn. You are. Spineless bribe-taking dog. Okay, Sarah, so you are 28 years old. Lu Jung is a rogue. She is competitive, committed, and resourceful. And you have two options. Precision or intuition. Just while Sarah's getting her head round which one she wants to pick, guys, just in case you are new to the stream, if you've only just arrived, or if you're watching this after the fact and you somehow missed me say it at the beginning, uh, followers and subs uh, are... And you know what? Even people in the chat at this stage, anybody is basically permitted to sponsor an officer in this game where you will get to choose what skills they get when they level up and attempt to guide their career path. So if you want them to be a civil officer, you know, you try and push for them to be that. Might not happen because you're working against the character in charge of the faction. But if you want them to be a great general, try and secure yourself a general position. And of course, you will all be consulted on in general advice, which leads into, um, well, the one in the middle that they both lead to is perception. Precision leads to resourcefulness next and intuition leads to judgment next. If he is prepared to take bribes that take food from the mouths of his own men, can he be trusted to remain loyal and honest to you? Precision, says Sarah. Excellent. I mean, so far, Chu Gong, you're the one that's wavering the most about whether you're happy with the faction, <laughs> ironically. But yes, uh, you make a, a compelling argument. We have a problem now because having no money means we're going to continue to lose troops here. Um, 
Dun, 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 dun. I wonder if we we have a trade agreement that we can use, but nobody is close enough to trade with us that wants to, by the looks of it. Hum. Zhang Yin has taken Taiyuan Iron Mine on the eastern side of the mountains. Oh, this is a rough spot. Red in this one is who we're at war with. So these are the territories. That's Zhang Yang that we just fought. We've got a Han settlement there. And then Dong Zhuo's got three settlements there that we can see. We don't really have much in the way of options here. I think the only thing we can do is try and disband some units to drop the difference. Sabre Militia are worth 120 upkeep each, so if we disbanded three of them, we'd start making money. Mm. Okay. Let's move back across the border. We cannot encamp. And we're going to get rid of these three level one Sabre Militia. Because it's the only t choice we've got. Excellent. Now we're making 100 copper a turn. Our troops are starting to replenish. It's going to take five turns for Zhang Zhang to get back to full health. Shun Yu is not happy either. No, you're not able to merge them in this game, Ryan, unfortunately. Gao Gan will sign a non-aggression pact with us if we give him a clay warrior. He thinks he's doing us a favour. Although, could we maybe just get a little bit of money from him? He's got 5,000 copper. Holy crap. Hmm... Oops, I didn't actually click that. You know what? I might do this. Galgan is just outside the, uh, just to the east there. I'm going to give him the, um, the clay warrior he asked for and an iron sickle. But we're going to get a bunch of money off him just to speed things up. Um, 4.2... Could we maybe get a grand off you? Oh, we could. Holy crap. How much are you making per turn? 537. Well, okay, you definitely don't want to give me money per turn, but that's fine. Could we make that like 1,250? No. I think we could get 1100 though. We could, and he still thinks it's a good deal. So we're going to do that. Because we need the money. Uh. Oh, shit. We are not ready for that. We're going to have to retreat, but they might follow us. <sighs> Jesus Christ, that was close. Apologies for blowing into the mic there, guys. Wow! They could have uh, really done us in there. Um, let's return to the toolmaker for a little bit. Um, 
upgrading that tool forge costs 2600 wow yeah this is a rough spot check discord when i can oh no jang <laughs> jang yin really why well that's severely gonna change things Hey, Chun Gong is in the uh, recruitment pool. Damn it. This is more or less what happened to me uh, in the first Jung Jang campaign. It happened a little bit quicker than this. But Jung Yen decided he didn't like us. And uh, became an arsehole. Ryan, Chu Gong has leveled up. So you are a 30 year old champion. Uh, with a wanderer background uh, who is relentless clumsy and honorable you have three options you have consideration wisdom or reach yeah it probably is because we're weak Taking a hard loss against uh, Jong Yang. Jong Yong has not done us well. What does Reach do? It's, it gives you plus eight instinct, uh, allows plus one available armies if you're the Prime Minister, heir, or faction leader, which you are not, uh, and 25% campaign movement range if you're the general. If you're a general. If you want to, I'll do the other two anyway, just before you ask. Consideration gives plus eight resolve. It's plus 50% reinforcement. Reinforcement? Reinforcement. Sean Connery just paying a visit there. 50% reinforcement range if you're the general, and it enables the encourage ability, which provides a morale boost to friendly troops. And Wisdom is plus 8 Cunning, unlocks the assignment, reward the filial and incorrupt, and gives plus 15 reserves to commanderies where you are the administrator, which basically means like the local lord. Consideration. An honourable man must take thought to what is right. I like it. Uh, this might be the shortest campaign in history, the way we're going, but uh, I'm liking the involvement, guys. I'm glad that people are uh, starting to feel their characters that they've sponsored. Oh, fucking Chong Yen. What's the garrison in Taiyu in town? Four units. Shut up! Babbling all the bloody time. Alright, we're going to move this way so that we're close enough to support Tai Yuan if Zhang Yen turns up, which he probably will. <laughs> Relentless, clumsy and honourable don't really sound like the traits of someone possessing great amounts of wisdom. You may well be right, Ryan. That might be completely correct. Guys, thank you so much to everybody who's hanging out. We're about halfway through the stream. We're an hour and a half in, so probably another hour and a half to go. Uh, Dong Zhuo will sign peace. Where's the vassal? Oh, he's not demanding vassalage yet, but he is demanding money and territory, which we can't really afford to give him. So I'm going to say no. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you are lurking, I appreciate you as well. Uh, lurkers are arguably, uh, you know, just as important as people who are speaking because you guys are bumping up the view account, and I really do appreciate that. It really helps the channel. Uh, the Han Empire, Huang Fu Song, one of my unsung heroes of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, has died and been succeeded by Shun Bao Fang. And we have... what the feck? While resettling the people, your attendant comes upon an issue and requests your judgment. A couple, 
living in the local area, have refused to move, claiming that this has been their home for generations. What should he do? I think the attendant, by the looks of it, is Chu Gong. Um, but we don't have the option to pick these two. We can only force them to move, which costs us money. So I think we're basically paying them to move. You had your troops carry the couple to the settlement site. Stewie, look, look. Thank you very much, Stewie. I see you hiding there. Guys, if you do fancy getting involved, feel free to do so. Again, even at this point, people who are just in the channel uh, can sponsor an officer if they wish. If you want to join my Discord, exclamation mark Discord will get you an invite to that. Where we uh, hopefully will start to build a little bit of a Three Kingdoms community. Because I am planning on doing 3k every Thursday. Three Kingdoms Thursday. And not any other days. So if you guys, as long as you've got a couple of hours free on a Thursday evening, if you're in the UK or wherever your time zone is, you can participate and you won't be left behind. Uh, I'm going to get administra ad administrative recommendations plus 10% income from all sources. Even now, a recommendation can do more for a career than skill alone. That's definitely how it worked in uh, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. And I think it's time to get that third save on the board. Twitch, number three, save to cloud. All right. We can't really afford to, like, upkeep more troops, so... And we're still replenishing. So we're going to have to sit tight for a little bit. We're just getting more and more broke. I know, it is rough. Shush. Oh, nobody's particularly happy right now. Good lord. Um, Shun Yu has gained the understanding trait. Don't think anybody has sponsored Shun Yu yet. Tsai Mao and Tsong Chin Ting are now available in the recruitment pool. Tsai Mao must have had his faction destroyed by somebody. Uh, trying to think what might be a viable option. What we really need to do is get a big enough army that we can take some stuff. But we can't afford to do that just yet. And especially with the uh, damage that we've taken, there's... Okay, that's not a full army. Somewhat surprised that Labu didn't attack the fishing port. Yeah, me too, but I'm glad he didn't. So this is Yong Cho and Tufa Junning. See what I mean? Some of these names. Both strategists with not very many troops. Doesn't mean there's not anybody in Yanmen. Or Yenmen. Move a little bit closer. I don't want to get closer than that. I'm going to drop into an ambush just in case they decide to push south. And we're still trying to replenish troops. Don't forget that's the main reason we're not going on the offensive right now. Zhang Yin, they actually did come south and get ambushed. Oh, and the uh, Tai Yuan's garrison's even involved. I mean, it's a guaranteed win. Uh, especially if we fight at night. We outnumber them two to one. They don't have any strong officers. Four units of archers, two units of G militia, one unit of swords. What do you reckon, guys? Should we fight it, or do we just delegate it? If we fight it, it's going to be a slaughter, but it might be fun to watch.
if you don't fight during the night it says low predicted casualties you are correct that's interesting oh I wonder yeah if we do a night battle our reinforcements don't arrive either that's why well spotted hun Lu Jung the strategist guys what's the red faces icon on the fishing port uh, yeah they're probably upset red face usually means upset David says let's thrash him Ryan says delegate it we do have a 91% chance and an 88% chance of capturing them that's what these are by the way it's quite nice and they're strategists so they can't duel Cal wants to see the bloodbath Sarah wants to delegate oh it's split right well Sarah's character I don't know what Sarah's character is in the army so I'm gonna let her have the uh, deciding vote there so we're gonna delegate this one because it did look like that was two two against two. Oh! just punched him in the face they both died fuck's sake well we did get cash for winning the battle and we can also ransom the troops that we captured so that's more cash Wang Kuang wants to pay us 743 copper if we give him a scholar for a non-aggression pact considering our financial situation I think this is a good idea what do the advisors think Sarah says yes anybody else weighing in David says money take it with our financial difficulties it also reduces the risk of another problem for our struggling economy to fight well that seems to be the consensus Hope yes Wang we'll Kuang we'll send you a bloke to be scholarly with you a jade bird over tea you tell your general of your dream of a jade bird the general takes a long sip of their tea places the cup down and looks you in the eye a vision of a jade bird is an auspicious prophecy the jade indicating imperial matters and the bird a being that can traverse the gap between earth and heaven the relationship between Lu Jung and Jung Jiang has deepened and I think it has deepened enough for them to swear an oath together Jung Jiang and Lu Jung are now oath sworn Sarah and Jung Jung has leveled up as well level 5 greedy determined and clever guile trust I think it's guile next one for her is consideration on that line unfortunately Yang Cho and Tu Fa Jun Ning were both killed I say unfortunately we couldn't afford to recruit them anyway but um, no we're gonna keep the money um, and try and invest it into the army uh, Chu Gong still on an assignment yeah we only have one assignment available which is being used is there a garrison at Yun Men? No, there is not. Good. We are sacking the crap out of that. Sisters before misters. David's going to get more strategic when he finds someone he wants to sponsor. That's perfectly fine, David. The Yuan Xiao Festival. As the night draws in, you hear the sounds of celebration in the distance. Distracted from your meditations, you see hundreds upon hundreds of brightly coloured paper lanterns hanging from every house and tree. The sight is truly beautiful to behold. And the thing that the game hasn't realised is the town that we're looking at is an enemy town that we're about to set alight. Excellent. Right. We are going to beeline straight in here. Uh, we are going to delegate because it's low and it's a settlement battle. 
Um, so we don't really want to get involved on the battle map with that just yet. Gain a smidge of loot just from winning the fight. That's loot off of the dead soldiers basically. And then we're going to sack and withdraw for three and a half thousand copper. Now we have almost 7,000 copper. Some of that is going to get invested into improving the tool forge into a tool workshop. But most of it is going to get put into recruiting a full-sized army that we can defeat Zhang Yang with. <laughs> Paper lanterns? No, fire arrows! <laughs> Lots of fire. Oh, hello. Oh, somebody told you that we've got a load of money. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, this one's definitely up for negotiation. Zhang Yang, the guy that beat us in the south, is now offering to pay us 831 copper to leave him alone. Given that we are currently outside of Zhang Yen's territory, which we can easily take, that's... it's not quite as simple as just no we want to kill you because we do still have a front in the north but the question is do we want to take some extra money to fund a war against Zhang Yin or do we want to beeline back his way and kill him first Sarah's saying yes please give us your muns Ryan they're offering you money for peace they don't expect to be able to stand against us a second time now we have financial backing to kick their faces in stomp them out take their income by force somehow Ryan I knew you were gonna say that where are we at with everybody else Cal David anybody else any of the lurkers if you guys want to weigh in on this where what do we think we still we've, we've got opportunities to expand in either direction so if we take his money and secure the south We've still got the north and the east against Zhang Yin. Or we can just charge straight at Zhang Yang and remove him, because I'm pretty sure he only has one settlement. David says take the money and fight the others. Cal says fight one front at a time, which I think he means take the money and make peace in the south. It would be nice to force them to become our tributaries, which we can do if we beat them hard enough. Yeah, I mean he's only got one settlement and it's farmland so I don't think even as a tributary he'll make that much money for us. It's a valid point against other people but I don't think it's necessarily the same against him. How much land does Zhang Yang have? One settlement, the farmland that we already fought over. If it's just that one town you can still make it one front at a time by taking them out. Cal saying take the money. I think take the money is the more popular option here. Uh, Sarah, I'm going to give you a little bit more weight because you're Jung Jiang's oath sister. And you're saying give us your muns as well. So yeah, I think we're going to take his money and attack Zhang Yen. Which is fine by me because Zhang Yen stabbed us in the back after we sent him gifts. Cool. Uh, don't know who they are. So we are going to turn around and attack that small town again. And you know what? Uh, yeah, for 206 extra copper, we'll loot and occupy it. So we now own this, but it's actually deserted. We've beaten them to such a level that they can't really even stand up straight um no i'm not developing she her okay we still don't have a lot of actual income so whilst we can spend this money to get a bigger army we wouldn't be able to support it for too long so i'm definitely not going to recruit this turn it is reform time though and again for anybody who hasn't seen the game before i think there's a couple of you in here sarah pointed this out during uh the ca's streams the reforms come every spring and when you pick a reform the tree blossoms 
because it's spring and I love that about this. Ooh, 15% income from industry. We do make a little bit from industry. Ooh, this one's not as straightforward. How much do we make from industry? Because it can't be too much. Oh, all of Tai Yuen's income is industry income. 300 base plus 10%. So if we got this, it would be 300 base plus 25%. Well, we're going to get that iron and salt overseers. Salt is too valuable a commodity to be allowed to be stolen. There we go. We now we just went up to like we went up by 65 copper income. That's pretty big. And yeah, we'll do a little save because we're in quite a nice position here. Oh, you know what? That's not going to work properly, is it? There we go. Cool. Can we develop our army? Yes. It is David, isn't it? The uh, the tree. I love it. He's still not asking us to be his vassal, which is so unusual for Dong Zhuo. He is asking for an extortionate amount of money, so he's going to get told to jog on. But normally he'd be like demanding you become his vassal. All well and good having a big army, but if we can't supply and fund it, we'll only end up losing the land we fought over. Exactly, Ryan. Yeah, no, I agree, Sarah, but we need to time when we expand the army correctly. We can't just expand it right now because we might take too long to get into position and then have no money again. Um, I, I don't know if that's all of Zhang Yen's land, but it looks like he's got three settlements to the east of us an iron mine a livestock farm and a lumber yard hmm. well i think moving to the uh, head of this pass is probably a decent idea and then we are going to recruit. Now, I'm not really bothered about what the um, the upkeep is because it's going to be minus either way. Really, all we're looking for here is how much can we get an army together, and how many turns would it last? That would literally only last two turns, which is not going to be enough. That would last five turns, a whole year, which is easily long enough for us to sack one of these. So that'll do me. What's this about? Yin Li is not happy. Oh dear. Do we have an assignment? No, because Chu Gong's still on one. Right. Dong Zhuo is just a big pest at this point. He is. Without an immediate target set out, we can build the, an economy more capable of funding rampages like Yunmen. They goofed and in two easy fights we got a new hovel. Yeah. <laughs> new hovel. Still thinks you'd get some cavalry. Potentially yes, but cavalry is expensive. Oh look! Wait, he wants us to give him territory. What, what kind of position do you think you're in, Zhang Yen? Oh, that kind. Well, oh, shit me. This is going to be one of those like make or break fights. We've gained a water clock. He's got a full army, but it's not. The units aren't necessarily full. We've got Huang Long, Yu Du, and himself. How strong is he? He does a fair whack of damage. He's level 4. 
Jung Jung does do more damage than him. We can't reach him. Let's withdraw this way and we'll let him come up that pass if that's what he wants to do. Okay. Look at you guys! Sarah, can you go somewhere and lure him out of his territory so he can't replenish and try to at least get a round's worth of replenishment yourself? That's what we're doing. Ryan, fall back to a town or something for more replenishment. Cow sits in hovel with pitchfork and yells, get off my lawn, but in Chinese. <laughs> Honourable versus deceitful. You are in discussion with one of your scholars. You put it to him that honour is the ultimate virtue, unassailable and true. He returns that honour and virtue may make one's soul rich, but never one's pockets. Penniless is the virtuous man. Victorious is the pragmatic leader, he laughs. And we have a choice between honour and deceit. Chu Gong supporting honour, Kong Qian supporting deceit. And I think, I don't even know why Jung Jiang would say that honour is the ultimate virtue, given who she is. So I think we're going to go with deceit. Unfortunately, Chu Gong is going to get passed over again. He's right. A knife in the back solves most problems. Beginning with him. <laughs> oh, Chu... <laughs> Kong Chen. Nobody likes you, man. Right. He's got some severe replenishment issues on the go. I'm going to fall back. Because Yan, Yan Mun's deserted anyway. So it really doesn't matter if he takes it. We've got three more turns before we're bankrupt. So we need to strike at him soon. He's still in forced march. What's wrong with him? I was sponsoring the peasantry. Deceit, deceit, deceit. I feel like I'm not wanted here. You are wanted here, Ryan, always. Wow. Even then, it thinks the balance of power is pretty... Uh, pretty harsh. He's, some of his units have got quite a lot of levels, which is what these numbers are in the bottom left under the colour. What's he got? He's got six units of archers. Good balance. He's got three units of cav. Good balance. Five units of spears that don't have shields. Not fantastic. Two frontline infantry with shields. Two black mountain marauders that are going to be tough as hell. And he's got two vanguards. Fortunately, they do have significantly reduced health. And then there's him. Ooh. Well, if we don't strike, we're going to be bankrupt, so I think we need to do this. We outnumber him by 700 men, approximately. We could delegate and get a guaranteed win. We would take significant casualties, but we'd win. But I actually... I think... If we fought the battle, we might do better. Or at least I don't think we'd do significantly worse. 
Yes, we are better replenished than him now, Sarah. Cav are a problem. Yeah, he's got three units, but we've now got two more units of spears. So we've got three units of spearmen now. It would still be a tough fight, though. Because a lot of his units have got some experience, too. Cackles in Spicy. Welcome to the stream, Spicy. Delegate and get the guaranteed win, says Cal. Lissa's here as well. Because she just raided. Thank you for the raid, Lissa. Appreciate that so, so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Lissa and her raiders. Raiding in true Jung Jang style, guys. We are playing as the Bandit Queen right now in Total War Three Kingdoms. So we're doing a fair bit of raiding ourselves. What do we reckon, guys? I've seen a few pushes for Delegate, but I haven't, next, I haven't seen a push for Fight yet. We're about to uh, Delegate this bish. Take the delegate for the win, but it's the sort of mess situation that we're going to be strong enough after to press an advantage either way. It'll be close, Ryan, but I think at this early stage, Zhang Yan, or Zhang Yin even, is highly unlikely to have a second full-sized army. He might have a, a, a stack, like, like a retinue, or a retinue's worth somewhere else. But, like, we're not going to get a lot of resistance, and... The settlements will depend on how big they are. This is chanting fight, fight. Sarah's saying delegate. I'm getting a lot more delegates. And Sarah, whose sponsored character is in the army, is saying delegate. So we're going to delegate. The two bandit leaders with their dual axes. Going at each other. Our archers came off pretty well, but nobody else did. <laughs> We've captured Huang Long and Yu Du. Both of whom would be willing to join us. Now, that's not necessarily a smart idea because we don't have a lot of cash. But Yu Du is 34. He's strong, uncomplicated, and distinguished. Huang Long is 27 and is creative, superstitious, and quiet. I'm not in the business of executing people for no reason or just to grab items. So if anybody just ch chants execute, it's not going to happen unless there's a reason for it. I actually think if we release them for the total 500 copper, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, Ryan's just got to that same idea as well. Let's release them for the ransom. And we'll ransom the 400 captives for another 1,000 copper. In fact... Ooh, that's a close one. Do we ransom the captives for 1,000 copper? Or do we recruit the captives for an 11% replenishment? Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Replenishment and plus... God, replenishment and press the advantage. David saying recruit. This is saying <laughs> I love that is from a uh, an ASMR streamer, I believe. Is that a cat emote, Sarah? It looks like a cat emote. Yeah, it's from an ASMR streamer called um, Copycat. If you guys are at all interested in ASMR, she's amazing. Uh, it's so chill in her streams. You should definitely check her out. I've so far got one for replenish and one for recruit. God, it's hard having a, a council of advisors. You guys are constantly just going different directions. <laughs> replenish is recruit. Oh, I mean, yeah, to fair point, it is. I guess we're recruiting them then. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Cool. Uh, Kong Chen has actually gained his second level. And I'll once again, I'll do this one more time, guys, for the benefit of those raiders uh, and anybody who doesn't know what's going on. 
Uh, I will be streaming Three Kingdoms every Thursday around about the same time for two to three hours. And you guys can sponsor an officer. So, so far, Sarah has sponsored Lu Jung and Ryan has sponsored Chu Gong. And essentially what that means is you get to pick their skills when they level up. Uh, you might get a say in what equipment they get. Um, you will get to guide their sort of career path if you want them to be a civil officer or a general or a warrior or if you want them to be a pacifist that never participates or whatever you'll get a say in what your sponsored officer does and you also get to offer advice and those of you in the armies with people if you are a general as well you'll get to make the decision unchallenged because it's your army uh, but kong chien has leveled up he's wow he's not happy at all uh, okay. He is incompetent, deceitful, and intimidating. He has perception or understanding. Neither of those are particularly relevant. I'm going to go with perception over understanding because he's deceitful. And I think to be deceitful, you kind of need to have a little bit of perception. So we're going to go with that one. David says, can I sponsor Kong Chen? If you want to, David, you can. Unfortunately, I just picked your first skill because I didn't see your message. But, uh... Why is everybody screaming at me now? Is it because I picked the skill before I read David's message? Sorry. I'll do it. David's going to be Kong Chen. <laughs> Kong Chen's like the least liked person in Jung Jang's faction. David, you do know that, right? So I'll actually take the opportunity to explain how Harmony works to all the new people, especially David. Uh, your traits here, you'll see at the bottom, where underneath the uh, stuff it does, it says accepts carelessness, wary of intelligence, uh, disregards honor, disregards trustworthiness, and respects decisiveness. Essentially... If other people have the same, not the same traits, but they have the same disregards or the same accepts or same respects, your relations with them will be more harmonious, which is the speech bubble. Um, if it's a cross, you don't harmonize. If it's a tick, you do. And if like this, there's both of them, it means in the area around you, there's one of each or plural of each. Kong Chen, David. Everybody is, is, everybody's circle is red. Because they're all negative acquaintances, and all of the speech bubbles are X's. So nobody harmonizes with Kong Chen. I hope you realize that's who you're picking. You can change at any point and abandon Kong Chen, but uh, that's who you want to pick for the time being, is Mr. Unpopular. Leader Mu is still in the recruitment pool. Right, we've got four turns worth of... Um, money. We can't reach Zhang Yen right now, but most of his army's got to spend two turns convalescing, which means next turn they'll still be available to be hit. David taking Kong Chen. I might have to open a Discord channel that uh, keeps track of who's sponsoring who. Because I can tell once we get sort of a few more, it's going to be hard to remember. And I'll update it after each stream. Where do you think you're going, bud? Got news for you. No. Right. This is like literally outnumbered 10 to 1. So I'm going to make it a night battle for the extra morale. And then I'm just going to delegate. Sorry that you guys can't see. The game censored itself. Both you do and uh, Huang Long were killed in that battle. Huang Long actually died in a duel against Kong Chen. Hey! Kong Chen killed Huang Long in a duel. Well done, David. Uh, you know what? The money's not really going to make that much difference to how much we're losing. So I'm going to take the replenishment so that we can try and push on. Uh, we're going to force march the army down to there. 
Lu Jung and Zhang Yen are rivals because this one's friend was killed in battle against my army. They are indignant. So because Yu Du was killed in battle against Lu Jung, I don't know why he's blaming Yu Lu Jung and not anybody else, but Zhang Yen holds Lu Jung accountable, apparently. Right. We're still not spending money on buildings because we need to keep it for the war chest. Reforms. Uh, we'll get that. We don't have income from silk or spice yet, but another 15% from industry is probably pretty helpful. Merchant tax exemption. All men, according to their ability, must pay tithes to their rulers. An offer of thanks for benevolent leadership. That's what we're going to grab. It's reduced our um, losses by 60 copper, which is quite substantial. Uh, Yin Li is at 16 total satisfaction. Kung Chen is at 9. He desires a higher court position because he's a level 2. He's a senior intendant. We could promote him to chief treasurer. But it would cost 800 copper. Okay, hold on. He's currently at 9. Mm, rivalries within faction. Oh! Kong Chen considers Yin Li his rival, by the way, David. We were rivals in our youth. Some things are not easily forgotten. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, none of that's going to change for the worse, so we'll leave it for the time being. Um, we'll do a quick save. Because, again, we've made quite some ground. Sha! 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 Which is Chinese for kill, of course. You wafted him one too many times with that battle feather. <laughs> is that why Zhang Yen's annoyed with Lu Zhong? Because she was wafting him. The way I see it, I'm in the army and he's not. That's so Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Like, well, I don't really care about you, Yin Li. Because I'm in the army and you're not. Can't really argue with that logic. Um, okay. I'm going to... Oh, no. We're going to push down to that stream. Tai Yuan Iron Mine. I don't think we can actually see the settlement yet. But I think if we cross the river, we can. And there is... Wang Dong is in there with a very small retinue. Um, we're going to push as close as we can because we can't get replenishment, so we might as well force march if it's safe to do so. No one likes being tickled by feathers. You, I, you might find you wrong on that one, Ryan. Dong Zhuo is demanding less. Still wants she, her fishing port, but will accept that and an overseer. But he's not getting them. Zhang Yen. Okay, he's got a couple of small armies kicking about, but they're not currently a threat. Han Sui declared war on Dong Zhuo. A hero's aid. You read a report about one of your generals who beat six enemies single-handedly, largely due to the courage, speed and loyalty of their horse. Heroes have always had something, or someone, to help them achieve their rightful destiny. It can be a loyal follower, a trusted steed, a book of wisdom, or a weapon of unique properties, but they all fulfil the same role. Whether it is fate, or by your very own will and actions, such a thing has come into your possession. The real test is figuring out how best to make use of it, or them, to help you achieve your goal. So we've gained another ancillary, which was Expert's Leather! Cool. We 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 should start dishing out some boons of war at some point. Tie you in iron mine. Shouldn't be able to withstand us. Apparently, that army would be involved, but there's only 600 of them. But if we switch to a night battle, they're not involved anyway. So we're just going to delegate because again, we outnumber them 10 to one. 
战世间无人不知。What was I talking from experience about? <laughs> um, ooh, I think we loot and occupy for the 1100 copper. It will reduce the settlement, but right now that's not a concern. Commander Ian Conquer, my favorite achievement name. With this commandery under my control, I am as powerful as any of the other noble warlords. Soon they shall know just how strong I am. That's of course because we've now secured the entire commandery of Tai Yuen, which commanderies are the equivalent of provinces in other Total War games. We're going to spend a smidge of copper to repair the iron mine. Um, we're still making a loss. And Kong Chen is still not happy, but he's less unhappy now. Sean, welcome to the stream, buddy. Confusion? Is that your confusion or just general confusion? Yuan Shao wants to form a coalition if we give him our defender's leather. A jade and a jade sculptor. He will pay us all the ones in copper. One thousand one hundred and eleven. Now, I'm very, very tempted to the point where I'm going to weigh it quite heavily to say no to this because Jung Jang really hates Han nobility, and Yuan Shao is basically the antith antithesis. No. The opposite to an antithesis. The anantithesis. He is the embodiment of Han nobility. That's the word. But we'll see what you guys fancy. Let me know whether you think we should form a coalition with Yuan Shao. I think short of a unanimous vote, it's probably going to be rejected. But we'll see what you guys say. And we've got about uh, about 50 minutes left, just under an hour before we want to be ending the stream. He can sit on a spear. Okay, well that's already two people that have voted for fuck you, you and Chow, so no. Excellent. Chang Yen's army's trying to run away. I don't think they've got far enough. That looks like Zhang Yang's army that we're not at war with. Dong Zhuo signed a peace treaty with Wang Kuang. They did not get far enough. We're going to continue pushing. Uh, that's getting delegated. But we will fight the night battle for decreased enemy morale. I'm sorry there's not been too many on-the-field battles this uh, stream, guys. There will be more, especially if players have sponsored characters in the armies. But if it's too small, it's not worth doing. We've captured both Wang Dang and Zhu Li Yang. So... We can afford to take them on, but it is going to speed up our loss of... Uh, Traits. Wang Dang is 33. He's friends with Huang Long. Didn't Huang Long die? So he's friends with the guy that we killed. He's healthy, which essentially means he's super healthy. He's, he's one of those people that never gets sick. He's understanding and he's humble. He's worth 200 if we ransom him. And Julie Yong is 41. She's tough, ascetic and tranquil, but she's worth 500 copper. One, one dong dong long more confusion pinion names sean they uh they don't necessarily sound the way they look either too fast or too slow what did you say we might as well take advantage of his noble fool's request and stab him in the back when he least expect it lu jung as much as i did miss that sarah david and ryan had already said that he can sit and swivel so I think I was going to weigh it quite heavily that way anyway. Why stab him in the back when you can spit in his eye? <laughs> we 
we don't have one of the yellow commanders. That's true, we don't have a commander. But... Mm. Oh, she wouldn't actually join us anyway. She's the I am the heir of my faction. I cannot walk away from that. So the only one that would be an option is Wang Dong. To recruit. Take Ju and ransom the other. Can't take Ju, David. She's the heir. Ransom both. I think ransoming both is probably a good idea. Jung Jang's not particularly cruel, especially not to other bandits. Like, these guys aren't Han nobility, so we'll ransom them for 700 copper. We'll take the replenishment from the prisoners. Uh, we gained a robe of the omen maker from that battle, which is immediately going to be given to Jung Jang's sister. Who now changes, and she will change on the battlefield as well. She'll look more like this now. Uh, who the hell is that? Lady Chung Wanan and Wang Fu. Interesting. Um, let's move to there. I think if we can beat these guys here, then the lumberyard will just fall like a domino. Why spit him in his eye or stab him in the back when you can jam peppers in the eyes and up the nose? I don't know if they've got peppers in ancient China, Spicy. We've got enough feather wafters. An idea for the future, maybe have the council members in a voice chat so messages don't get lost in chat. I mean, it's definitely an idea, Cal. I'll consider it. But I'm a, I'm a little bit reluctant, maybe, to do that because I feel like it would, sp it would prevent people from engaging that are not already in the voice chat. Zhong Yan or Zhong Yen rather will make peace with us, and he will pay us 343 copper every turn for 10 turns to do that. So basically, he'll pay us three and a half thousand copper over two years. But I, I, he's getting told no because he's on the ropes. It's not worth making peace with him. <laughs> Negotiate! <laughs> Try and get him to be a tributary. Eh. Okay, little conqueror. Sun Tzu, the son of the late Sun Jian, has become a famed throughout the land for his exploits in conquering the Southlands. The people have come to call him the Little Conqueror, and you hear it spoken throughout your capital. Interesting. Uh, Lu Jung and Wang Dong are now rivals. A contemptible individual. I simply cannot abide time in their company. I could do that, Cow, actually. That's not a bad shout. Kong Chen also hates Wang Dang for the same reason. I don't know what Wang Dang did to piss everybody off, but he's not popular. Right. We could attack Zhongshan Livestock, Zhongshan Livestock Farm. I think we do that. There's no reason not to do it. That's a tough battle. Oof. They outnumber us by 200 men. They have got a lot of missile troops. We would win if we delegated. Starving them out is not really an option because that third small army is not involved in this battle. And if we starve them out, it will come down and they'll fight us with that as well. He insulted my feather. I saw him insult the feather. Now it's really starting to sound like Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I saw him insult the feather, my lord. We must chop off his head. Okay. I heard him insult the feather. How long before somebody smelled him insult the feather? I'm gonna pepper the feather. Spicy. Man, 
<laughs> Guys, come on. What are we doing? Do we do we cheese it a little bit and delegate for the win? Because we will win if we delegate. We can't really afford to starve them out. And if we fight it, especially given that... I think it would be a field battle, actually, because it's a farm. It would be, but that's still not good. Seven units of our army are archers. We're seething over the insult to the feather. <laughs> For God's sake. Alright, well... People saying cheese. If delegating will result, result in a win, I'd recommend delegate. Yeah, we'll delegate it. I really do want to step away from eventually delegating it just for the sake of it, just or to cheese it, but I don't think we'd win if we fought it. I really don't. Well, she's dead, whoever she was. Lady Chun something. Oh, yeah, I, I think it was that. And we've captured Wang Fu. That's not the one that everybody hates. That's Wang Dong. Wang Fu is a 21-year-old level 4 strategist who is impeccable, which basically means he's very neat and tidy. He's lumbering and solitary. He's a good-looking giant, essentially. Try to make Zhang Yen our tributary. But he'll only have one settlement left and it'll be a lumber yard. Is that really worth doing? Sell him to the salt mines. <laughs> salt mines with you! He would be, he is worth 500 copper, but we do now have 4,200 copper in the bank. 21 year old and he's already level 4. That's pretty good. And it looks to me... Yeah, he even comes with a unit of Zhang Yen's uh, unique troops, which we wouldn't be able to get any other way. The Black Mountain Marauders. What do we think, Council? Do we recruit Wang Fu, who... I am fonder of my head than I am loyal to this faction. Allow me to join you and I will serve you well. Or do we sell him back to them for 500 copper? I don't really want to execute him because we've got no real reason to. David is saying recruit him. Lu Jung? Chu Gong? What do we think? Can we afford his wages if we can recruit? We can't afford them, technically speaking, Ryan. It's an extra 200 copper on top of the 325 we're already losing per turn. But we have got a chest of four, uh, 4200 copper so even losing 500 a turn it would still take us 16 turns to lose all of it and that's assuming we don't loot anymore or ransom anymore so can we afford it not if you look at the finances right now but it, in theory in practice yes more than likely I wonder why that is. I could have sworn someone mentioned tributaries early on. <laughs> what? Why are you upset with me? We're going to need to spend that money. We need to get out of the deficit. That's true. I don't think I like him, but we're already in a dicey situation. Do we need another feather wafter? Look, I meant I do like him. Wait a minute, what? Oh, I do think I like him. Right, so you're saying you wish we could recruit him, but we... Don't, we can't. Alright, I'm going to give it another 30 seconds or so and get some opinions in. And after that... <laughs> opinions! After that we're going to make a decision. It's looking like he's getting released right now. Can we afford to let a level 4 strategist go? Exactly, Cal. If he was level 1, I'd certainly be saying, out he goes. And if he was, like, level 4 but 50-odd, I'd definitely be saying, out he goes. But the truth of it is, he's 21 and he's already level 4. Which means level 10 is the max. And he's essentially got, well, his whole life, basically, to get the other 6 levels. 
his stratagems obviously weren't that good. We've got him in chains. True, but, uh, you know, that's the case in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Very often, people were defeated, and in defeat were still recruited. But I think he's getting released for now. We can have a look out and see if he uh, turns up later on. Um... I'm going to loot and occupy because it's a farm. No, I'm not. I'm going to occupy because that garrison size will immediately begin replenishing. If we loot it, the settlement side goes down, which probably means the garrison will. Cool. Occupied. Lu Jung has leveled up again, Sarah. So has Jung Jang, so I'll do Jung Jang first. While Sarah comes back to us. Clever, greedy and determined. And we have consideration or trust. I think it's got to be consideration for Jung Jung. Sack and withdraw. Ah! <laughs> Sarah, I'm sorry. I think maybe next time Cal's definitely right. The council may need to be sitting in a voice chat that's muted unless I have a question. But we'll, we'll have a talk about that. I think, Cal, you probably had the uh, right of it, to be honest, but the general consensus seemed to be to kick him to the curb. So if you take a few minutes on decision for us all to weigh in our thoughts and then call out a simple yay or nay from your council. Well, that's what I was doing, and we did that on whether he gets hired or not, but then I didn't ask about the settlement, which is what Sarah was giving advice on. Spicy, thank you very much for the host, buddy. I really appreciate that. Welcome to the hosted viewer. Every time. Hey, you know, sometimes you just got to be decisive. Look, Lu Jung's a level 4 strategist and she was ten, she's 10 years older than he was. That's That should put it into perspective a little bit more. Uh, Sarah, Lu Jung, leveled up. 31-year-old rogue strategist. Competitive, committed, resourceful. Two options. Resourcefulness. Oh no, there's three. Perception or intuition. Resourcefulness. Literally one of her traits. Boff. And she just became legendary in cunning. That's what that gold circle means. And next turn her name will turn gold. And gold characters essentially have resilience. Which means even if they are beaten on the battlefield, there's a chance they won't die. In fact, it's highly unlikely they'll die unless they're beaten in a duel. It was Lady Chung Wanan that we killed. So you want to make Zhang Yan a tributary. Shut up. I don't know if he's even going to be worth that much, but let's see. Demand a percentage of this faction's regular income in exchange for peace. We receive 35% of their regular tax income from their commanderies plus trade up to 8,000 copper. Does it tell us what it's worth? It doesn't tell us what it's worth, but Zhang, Yan, Zhang Yen would agree to be a tributary. So, Council, we have a decision to make. Zhang Yen has one territory left, a lumber yard. He's probably not going to make a lot of money from that. And he's likely to get killed by somebody else at some point. But we could make him a tributary now, which essentially makes peace and he pays us 35% of the poor taxes that he gets. Once he expands, he'll make us hella good moolah. Yeah, if he expands, but I think he's more likely to get killed by Gong Sun Zan. Chu Kong is going to be legendary in being told to fuck off. Uh, also, it's a plus 29. Yeah, it is a plus 29, but don't make any difference. Like, it just means he thinks it's a good deal. We can't actually add anything else to it with this. You either... It's that, it's that or nothing. No, I don't believe we are, because it's not the same as being a vassal. It's a unique thing to Jung Jung. So I don't think we are obligated to protect him. If he was a vassal, which most other people, like everybody else can do vassalage, but they can't do this, 
then yes, you would be obligated to protect him. And if you don't, it breaks the vassal agreement. He's poor as hell right now. Could he even expand if he wanted? I don't think he can, David. That's the problem. I think we're going to get 35% of practically nothing until somebody kills him. Conquer the territory ourselves, says Cal. We can come back to that. Like, he's literally only got this one territory. And the person to his east is Gongsun Zan. Gongsun Zan is almost guaranteed to attack Zhang Yen at some point. If they're not already at war. Be quiet. Stop telling me things. Currently, Zhang Yen is trading with Gongsun Zan. He's at war with Han Fu, who's to the southeast of him and could just as easily take him. Well, maybe not just as easily, but just as likely. Ryan says it's a nay from him. Don't think it's worth it. We can take the lumber easily ourselves. Maybe next time we let them keep a few settlements. Pretty sure tributaries is a major part of Jung Jung's faction. It's going to be a big part of her income. That's a fair point, honey, but I just don't think it's like the point we've pushed Zhang Yen to. It's not worth doing. And that seems to be the consensus I'm getting from the council. So I think we just defeat Zhang Yen. The other thing is, we do want tributaries, but we don't want to be boxed in by them while we're really small. Um, we've got 5,000. I am going to spend 2,000 on upgrading Taiyuan to a large town, I think. Grants us 25 income from peasantry. It does increase commerce income, but we don't have any commerce income. That's quite expensive for very little gain. Might not be worth doing. Maybe we expend, expand the tool workshop. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's for 3,700 copper. But it gets us 100 extra income. And it, actually, it would give us 135 extra income. Plus, look at the garrison on here. The one we've currently got is four units. Upgrading it turns it into a lot more than four. Eleven. Ten? I can't add up. That's seven. That's ten. Eleven. Yeah. Establishing a solid core of land is important in the early years. Yeah, exactly, Ryan. I think I'm going to take the risk um, of... Oh, it wouldn't remove all of it. Okay, no, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We definitely need to have an economic reform period after we uh, finish off Zhang Yan. Or Zhang, <laughs> Zhang Yin. I keep struggling with his name because I keep forgetting that's, that special rule. I think Zhang Yang might, meet, might be at war with Zhang Yin. Shut up. Is he trying to grab land? Is that what this is about? Yes, he is. They are at war. Jung Jiang has gained the stubborn trait. That's quite fitting. We've also gained a wooden fish. Uh, we're not going to get there before he does. Ah, that's an interesting dilemma. Although, his, what's their garrison like? Because his army's garbage. Four units, plus not very many of anything. Uh, ah. Hang on. What? We don't... Okay. We don't actually have a non-aggression pact with Zhang Yang. We just made peace. So... Alright, 
Council, we have decisions to make again because Zhang Yang is going to get to Zhang Yin's lumberyard before we do. I'm pretty sure he's going to win. It's certainly not guaranteed that uh, Zhang Yin will win. And if Zhang Yang takes it, well, then he's going to have territory there and territory there. So we've got multiple options. We can we can try and race him and hope that he doesn't attack, but I don't think that's very likely. Um, we could attack him and kill him and then attack that and then go back down to take his farmland. Or we could let him take that, then attack him and then go take his farmland. I don't know. What do we think? Let's fight him and pick the bones. Or let him fight and pick the bones. Good idea, Ryan. Okay, Ryan and Cal are uh, quite happy to just let them kick each other's faces in. We are gaining quite some replenishment while we're on this livestock farm. Why is the money... Okay. The money's not quite as bad as it was. I'm tempted to uh, upgrade that tool depot now then. I think that's worth it. We'll lose like 600 over the next four turns, so then we'll still have 500 left, but then we should only be losing like 30. So that 500 is going to take forever to disappear. Let him take it, attack him, then take his land. Let him attack and take him on after. Let him fight, show up, clear him out, and claim the settlement. Then go take his stuff as payment for taking your land. <laughs> because it's our land, we just haven't got there yet. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's pretty much in agreement. We'll let him do his thing. We've got another reform to grab. Um... that less corruption that's not a problem right now I'm gonna get shaft mining yes jokes I know because it reduces the construction cost for mines by 20% and we do have a mine which is currently level 1 so we'd gain maximum benefit from leveling it up if we have this oh god the ability to go deeper than ever before is a tempting proposition I read that like an idiot, but there you go. And again, we are in a nice position, so we'll do a save. That's going to save like an arse. Yep, knew it would. No thank you. That's not how I want my saves. Thank you. Han Fu will give us 485 copper if we give him a wooden fish and we agree not to fight each other. Just for reference guys, Han Fu is here, immediately to the east of the lands we're just conquering. But we are about to flip our army back down the south to fight Zhang Yang. Did he even take that settlement? Nope, he's just stood there, so we could have beaten him to it, I think. They're going to get stronger. Hmm. Oh, it might not be his turn yet, that might be why. One less thing to worry about. Maybe he hasn't... Yeah, exactly, Ryan. I think that's probably the case. Uh, I w I'm... Mm, what well, He's trusting, so... Yeah, I'm quite happy to do this because I don't think Han Fu is likely to attack us. And to be honest, if we keep pushing too far east, we're going to end up with a territory that's very linear and it's going to be quite hard to defend. 
So I'm happy to do this unless the council is not. But it looks like uh, Chu Gong is the only one who's weighed in. Nobody else wanting to weigh in. I think if somebody on the council has a lengthy thing they want to say, then by all means type weight or an ellipsis so I can see that something's coming from you because I can't see if you're typing. Give him a fish and money and a non-aggression. Yeah, basically give him a fish for 485 copper and a non-aggression pact. A wooden fish. Got around about 15-20 minutes left, guys. One hundred percent. I'm guessing that's one hundred percent. Do it. So, Lu Jung and Chu Gong think it's a good idea, and nobody else has chipped in. He's not really our problem yet. We have bigger problems. May as well get some money out of him. Yep, exactly. So we'll take it. Okay. He did take his turn, but he went the other way. Shut up. Kong Chien, David, has gained the direct trait. Tact is not exactly one of this individual's strong points. I just Let's just have a marvel at Kong Chien, right? He's 30 years old. He's deceitful, incompetent, intimidating and direct. He lies, he's crap at his job, he's scary, and he tells you whatever he thinks. Who the hell would want to be around somebody like that? Kong Chen just keeps getting better. <laughs> I wonder why no one likes him. David says I chipped in. Oh, you did! Take it so we can focus on the Southern Territory. Apologies, David, I missed it. But at least you were agreeing, so we still did what you said. Right, um, we need to push against them now because otherwise they're going to get stronger. Yep, Zhang Yang's running all the way back south. He's leaving Zhang Yen's land to us. Oh my god, you need to stop talking. Uh, Yuan An Yang, Tsai Mao, and Miao Zichun are available to recruit. Now I'm going to have a little look at who's in the recruitment pool. Liu Yu is in there, he's a 53 year old level 3 commander. I mean, actually, there's no point looking, is there? Because if we bought one, we'd be in deep crap financially. So it'd be a waste of time. Okay. It's a guaranteed win with the uh, delegate. So... I mean, we could starve them out, and once they've taken a lot more attrition, demand surrender and see if they would. At this point, there's not any, there's nothing they can do except fight us anyway. So I'm tempted to starve them out, because we don't have anywhere more pressing to be. Is Kong Chien a historical Chinese Trump? I don't think he's a historical Chinese Trump, but as far as I'm aware, he was a historical character in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Starve them out, I'm scary enough, yeah. I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll just starve them out for a bit and we can start looking at where we're going to be going uh, in future. Uh, Yanman is... Oh, we actually have assignments too. Okay, hold on. All right, we've got one assignment available for the whole faction, which means one person that's not in an army can be sent to do a job. 
for those of you who don't know, the way assignments work is you have to have control of the town. Uh, every commandery is basically a town or city with resource settlements. So a toolmaker, iron mine, farm, fishing port, right? If you don't have the town, you can't assign settlements uh, assignments. So she, her, this one's the town. We can't do assignments there. Where we can do them is either tie you in or Yanmen, because this is technically speaking Yanmen's town, even though nobody lives in it. So, our options are Yin Li, Chu Gong, and Shun Yu to be sent on an assignment. What do we think? Who and where? G stands for good. George Wood is in the house. Where have you been hiding? Oh, just busy, mate. <laughs> Trying to get back on a bit of a stream schedule. So, Three Kingdoms is going to be every Thursday. Um, there will be a small disruption when I move later on in this month or early next month but hopefully it will just be like around the the week that i move they'll see kong chen standing outside their towers and all collectively agree to just starve to death <laughs> see him out there and be like i'm not going to talk to that asshole whatever works chu gong should be sent out so he doesn't get dissatisfied doing nothing chu gong is unhappy i'm pretty sure most of the oh yeah that's true Yin Li and Shun Yu are both quite satisfied. So, Chu Gong. Uh, Chu Gong's personal assignments are agricultural exploitation, which gets us more food, and bandit patrols, which reduces enemy supplies in the commandery that he's doing the assignment in. They're not really... that one's probably not going to do very much. Oh, everybody can do bandit patrols. I think that must be a faction assignment. So what do we want to do? We're going to send Chu Gong to do agricultural exploitation at Tai Yuen. Yan Mun doesn't make any food, so because that's this one. Uh, so there's no point sending him to do it there. I think we're going to do that. Seems to be the agreement that Chu Gong's going. Weigh up the gains of what the other two can offer against the gain of keeping my boy happy. Well, Shun Yu can stimulate markets, which improves income from commerce, silk and spice. I'm pretty sure we don't make any of those incomes. No, Tai Yuen's all industry. Yin Li can generate extra trade influence, but we don't have a trade agreement. But he can over he can supervise construction, which makes it cheaper, faster, and lowers building upkeep. So if we're gonna do some building, the one that's already started won't count. But like if we were gonna start building up Yanmen, we could send Yin Li there and then next turn build something in Yanmen, and we would get it one turn quicker and ten percent cheaper. The G stands for good with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, G. Welcome to the doghouse. Welcome back to the doghouse again. Really appreciate your support, mate. Thank you very much for using your Twitch Prime with me. The overall reduction in upkeep would be quite nice. Uh, well, that's only whilst he's doing the assignment, and it's only in the local commandery. So if we were going to send him to Yan Mun with that one, it wouldn't do anything. But if we sent him to Tai Yuen with that one... We can't really afford to build anything in Tai Yuen, but we would get 25% building upkeep reduction. Uh, I don't know what... I don't know how much of the uh, money is building upkeep. If any. I don't know how to tell, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh no, yeah I do. That one's 10. Wait a minute. Where the hell do you tell... Oh, okay. Yeah, fine. I actually don't think we pay any building upkeep right now. We don't pay any building upkeep in Taiyuan right now, so it really wouldn't be worth doing in Taiyuan. 
The only right, so the the two options, the best as I can see, is we either send Yin Li to Yan Men to supervise construction and start building it up from next turn, or we send Chu Gong to do agricultural exploitation in Tai Yuan to keep him happy and generate a bit more food. We don't need the food, but that's the options. It's either Chu Gong Tai Yuan or it's Yin Li Yan Men. Cast your votes, Council. Uh, la, la, la. Chu Gong, Chu Gong. Okay, it's looking like Chu Gong to me. Let's get Chu Gong on his way out to do an assignment. Would that actually help? Not really. Just for reference, guys, that's only going to improve his mood by four. Because sending him on an assignment reduces the lack of purpose negative factor, which is currently only minus four. It can go up to minus 20 tops. So eventually it will go up, but we'd be maybe be delayed. We'd be removing it before it's a problem, I think. Nobody's protested, so we're just going to do that. Off you go, Chugong. Go and help the farmers with their fields. I know it's not what you want to be doing, but... You're only 34. <laughs> That's quite old, I guess. Yin Li's 37. He's the oldest. Right. Let's push on. Gong Zan wants to form a coalition, but he wants us to basically give him the whole feckin' planet. So, that's a no. Poor Chugong. I know, we'll get him in an army at some point. Oh, they have decided that they're going to fight because they realise they're going to lose if they don't. But they're going to lose anyway. So I think we just delegate this and beat them. 100% chance of capturing Wang Dang. Uh-oh. <laughs> Suppose it should be used to being told to fuck off. I mean, go help the farmers. It's not strictly being told to fuck off. It's just, you know, it's more like... I mean, maybe if you translate the Chinese for go help the farmers, it means the same. Sha! 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 Are we delegating? I think we're delegating, right? Is anybody opposed to delegating? Say I if you're opposed. Not seeing any eyes. Ryan says may as well. I assume you mean may as well delegate. Lu Jung, Kong Chen. Ryan, I promise you if you do come to the next week's Three Kingdoms Thursday, hopefully by that stage we'll start to need a second army. Uh, the way this game's best played is, like, we've still got a gap in the first army, so there's not really any point in raising the second one. But we're reaching the point now where we're stabilising the finances, so we should be able to start developing a proper income, and then we'll start being able to afford a second army. Go on. Okay, we're going to delegate. We're going to win this battle. Wang Dong looks like he was killed. As was whoever she is, Julie Young, who def who lost a duel to, uh, wait, oh no, apparently Julie Young actually defeated Jung Jung in a duel, if I'm reading that right, don't know how the hell that works, <laughs> we wield this pissing rake for the greater good, greater good. Uh, capture troops. I think the easy choice is ransom because the supplies aren't a problem. It's going to be our territory and replenishment's not going to matter anyway. So, <laughs> Zhang Yang running away into the shadows like a coward. A spreading illness. Disease has spread amongst the men. Even now your forces fester with a lingering illness. 
It would be possible, however, to turn this to our advantage, sending the pestilential bandages and blankets over the enemy walls, infecting the enemy as well. So we can either ignore the issue, infect the enemy, or send medicine to our troops. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, I've just read you saying ransom, which is like the previous decision. Yeah, medicine from Ryan. I'm leaning towards medicine as well. We don't need to infect the enemy because they're already beaten and it Jung Jang doesn't seem like the kind of person that would ignore it. David saying medicine as well. It is kind of cheap too. Sarah saying medicine. It's going to be medicine. And we've taken the settlement. Uh, You know what? Just because we're going to occupy this. Oh, in fact, no. What do you guys think? Before I click the button and upset Sarah. Sarah's saying loot and occupy. Loot! Sarah's saying loot. Chugong's saying loot. Shouting from his farm. Just shouting at random farmers. Loot and occupy! They're like... I'm trying to sow the field, Chugong. <laughs> Kong Chen saying loot and occupy as well. It's definitely loot and occupy. Oh, Jesus. Right. Julie Yong was killed in battle against us. Uh, Jong Yen's faction's been destroyed. We've been given... Oh, no. We've... No. The bandits ride on the UN. These decadent, naive warlords bicker over the scraps of the Han. They are all as guilty as one another. The UN claim to lead coalitions to keep the peace, but they are nothing but power-hungry fools, deserving of the axe. We've been given a mission to destroy UN Shao, which we are sure as shit not doing right now, because that's a suicide mission. We've done that. Don't really care about that. And Wang Dong. Wang Dong was killed in battle, guys. So everybody who had beef with him, you can uh, rest that your beef has been dealt with. Right. We now border Gongsun Zan, Han Fu, Gao Gan, Zhang Yang. We still have a Han city down here. And to our west, Dong Zhuo himself. So not a bad little position. I'm tempted to run just till spring. Uh, just because I don't think it's going to be too hard anyway. We've got 3,200 uh, 3, copper. We're going to repair Yanman Lumberyard. And spend 1,000 copper bringing Yanman up to a small town, I think. Bring me back some rice. You're the farmer, you nut job. Shouldn't you be bringing us rice? Isn't that the way it works? What do we think, guys? Is it worth starting to build up Yanmen? It costs us a thousand copper, which is a third of what we've got. We're currently only losing a hundred per turn, and we are upgrading a building in Taiyuan, which should give us more money. So I think it's a decent choice, but. I can kill a man a lot quicker than I grow this fucking rice. Ryan, I'm starting to love Chugong. You'd be a great Zhang Fei character if we did a Liu Bei campaign. You should definitely choose to sponsor Zhang Fei. Not seeing any objections to expanding or rather rebuilding the town of Yanmen. It's getting done, guys, in five, four, three, two, one. David chipping in there to say we might as well. Sarah saying go on as well. Excellent. Cool. Right. Uh, we can't move the army this turn because it only just took the settlement. Yuan Xiao's back, wants to form a coalition. Right. 719 copper. He wants to defend his leather and our jade sculptor. Sarah, I know you thought this was a good idea last time. Nobody else seemed to. But has anyone's position changed? Yay or nay on a coalition with Yuan Shao, guys? Just 
just to be clear, Jung Jong's position is that he's a despicable noble, and she'd really rather die than do a deal with him, but we'll see. <laughs> Suck a nut, Kong Chen says. That's pretty direct, David. You're taking on Kong Chen's traits. It was, it was a good idea when we didn't have a lot of muns. Okay, fair point. I'll trade in my fist for 719 copper. I think we're going to politely decline, Yuan Xiao. Cool. Hooray, we're making 10 copper a turn. It's a miracle. Uh, let's start moving... Ooh, actually. Yeah, no, we'll start moving back to tie you in. And... End the turn. I'm not upgrading she, her, because it's too close to Dong Zhuo's territory. We might... We could lose it any turn. I'm going to shit in his pillowcase before we leave. It's a good job you are in a field, because if we took you on diplomatic missions, things might go awry. Right. We can upgrade the town of Tai Yuen to a large town for pretty much all the money we have, but we are making a profit right now. It would not open up an extra build slot, but it would generate 25 income from peasantry. <laughs> quite oh no it may actually be worth waiting for Yan Mun to get a build slot and seeing if we can put something in there that generates a bit more cash I'm a warrior not a diplomat although somebody has me plowing a field I mean you can keep bitching if you want maybe we'll make plowing the field your job all right we're just going to pick the reform for this turn I think and then we're going to do a save don't need that Don't particularly need any of that. Construction cost for military infrastructure, redeployment cost. You know what? I'm going to get that one for the recruitment cost reduction to melee infantry because we might have one army, but the next one's going to need melee infantry. And it gives us plus eight satisfaction for the vanguards that we don't have. So trusted lieutenants, the regime draws on the zeal and dedication of those who fight for them, as they always have. And then we're going to pop our final save of the day. That has saved. Right, guys. First of all, just want to say a massive thank you to those of you who've turned out, even those of you who've lurked. I don't think I've seen my views this high in a long time and having everybody that's been active in the chat has just been amazing today. Um, for everybody else, if you're watching the VOD after the fact, if you're still lurking and you've missed it, this is a roleplay stream. We try and make the decisions based on the characters and it's also one where you can sponsor an officer, uh, whether you're a sub, a follower or just a person in the chat. Right now, everybody can do it. When it starts to get more popular, I might drop the everybody and make it followers and subs. But for the time being, anyone can sponsor an officer. All you've got to do is let me know you want to. And when you do, you get to pick their skills when they level up. You also get to try and guide their career. So do you want them to be a civil officer? Are you looking for them to be the administrator of a commandery? Do you want them to be a great general or a great warrior? Even if you do want them to be a great warrior, we might tell them to be a farmer, a la Chu Gong. But you can, I know that Ryan wants it. We're going to get him there. It's just not been possible yet. But you guys can make decisions. You can help influence the faction and guide your sponsored officer. You can also switch your sponsored officer at any time, but I am going to limit it to one person, one officer per person, so that you don't get too many candidates and disinterested. Uh, but yes anybody may do so i hope to see you all especially those of you who have sponsored officers at the next three kingdoms thursday which shock horror will be on thursday 
at between 7 and 8 p.m. GMT or British Standard Time or whatever my local time is, 7, 8 p.m., so roughly three hours before now, that will be when next starts for Three Kingdoms Thursday if on day two of Jung Jung. Let me see, since I've got quite a few people, if there's anywhere I can raid, guys, because it's been a while since I was able to even do a raid. Uh, ba -ba -ba -la -la -ba -ba. Right. Uh, nobody that I follow is currently streaming Three Kingdoms. Uh, there's not very many people streaming 3K right now. So, let's not do that. I am going to raid the Rebel King, who's currently streaming Total War Warhammer 2. It looks like he's doing a Marcus Wolfheart, which is the new character from the new DLC released on Wednesday. Or one of the two new ones. We can make decisions when he doesn't make the decision within five seconds. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Guiding my career into ox shit. Well, you'll get there. Bitching makes the rice grow. <laughs> oh dear. Well... Guys, thank you so, so much uh, for joining me today, especially those of you who've been active in the chat and those of you who've sponsored officers. Thank you so much. It's the first time that anybody's actually sponsored officers. Um, next week, Thursday, Three Kingdoms Thursday, will be day two of this. So if you are interested in coming back and continuing with your sponsored officers, that'll be when. Uh, for the time being, we are going to do raid the Rebel King underscore all right guys the raid is on its way thank you again so so much next week guys day two jung jung three kingdoms thursday sponsor stream for sponsor and officer david thank you very much spicy ryan sarah cal lisa thank you very much for the raid g thank you so much for the twitch prime i hope i haven't missed anyone I know that there was some lurkers as well. Lurkers, thank you very much too. Guys, I'll see you all at the next stream. The next Three Kingdoms is Thursday. My next stream will be Saturday at 2pm my time. Thank you very much. Have a good time with Rebel King, guys.